The settlement resolves a civil lawsuit filed by McCabe, who argued his ouster was the result of a public vendetta driven by the former president who targeted him. You may recall that McCabe was fired more than three years ago, just day, hours before planned retirement, after the Justice Department's inspector general said he had lied repeatedly regarding a leak about Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. The case was referred to federal prosecutors who eventually decided not to pursue any charges against McCabe. And ever since, the former president has continued to attack McCabe. It's one of those moments in 2019. Well, I think Andrew McCabe has made a fool out of himself over the last couple of days, and he really looks to me like sort of a poor man's J. Edgar Hoover. He's a, uh, I think he's a disaster. And what he was trying to do was terrible, and he was caught. I'm very proud to say we caught him. So we'll see what happens, but he, uh, he is a disgraced man. He was terminated, not by me, he was terminated by others. Uh, the IG report was a disaster. A disaster from his standpoint. Anybody reading the IG report would say, how could a man like this be involved with the FBI? And the FBI has some of the greatest people, some of the finest people you'll ever meet. But this man is a complete disaster. The iron, of course, is the former president is now the disaster and the disgraced person. Andrew McCabe joins us. He's seen a senior law enforcement analyst. It's first interview since the settlement was reached. Andrew, uh, first of all, what does this mean for you and, and your family? Oh, my gosh. Um, Anderson, I, I can't tell you what, what this has been like going through, what this whole vindictive uh, campaign has put my wife through, my children, my parents. Um, so to have a settlement of this lawsuit and one that so clearly indicates this should never have happened, um, it, it is both an incredible relief. It's it's satisfying, but it's also, you know, it's also kind of sad. I mean, like, this should never have happened. My family should never have had to go through this. Well, I mean, it's remarkable. I hadn't realized that you had had, I think it was on a Friday night, you were having, you'd had a, a meal with your family, essentially a retirement uh, celebration with your family because you were retiring the next day, uh, and the, they they fired you right before that, consciously, uh, you know, vindictively. What was it like to have the former president who doesn't know you? I mean, he, he has no idea of anything about you. Just pick you out of, you know, obscurity, uh, essentially, in, in terms of his knowledge of you and just focus on you and it attack was, you. It was so it was so bizarre, Anderson. It, it you know, in, on December 23rd of 2017, he tweeted out to the world that he was racing me to my retirement. I mean, to know that. You essentially have a target on your back from the most powerful person in the world, the person that you ostensibly work for as a member of the executive branch. I mean, it was just a, it was like upside down world. Like you can't even, um, I, I can't even describe how terrifying and annoying and humiliating that is. But, you know, that's, that, that's what he subjected people through uh, for four years. It's also after a life of public service. I mean, it, there's, I'm sure a lot of people in your position could have long ago gone to a law firm or gone to do other work that would have been far more, um, you know, financially rewarding. Uh, you were serving the public. And, and, and I mean, does your settlement with the Justice Department admit any kind of political influence on their part in your firing? Because it was obviously Jeff Sessions under pressure, putting DOJ under pressure that was sort of the ripple effects of that. Absolutely. I mean, this was very clearly an act of of political of, you know, vindication against a perceived political enemy, which wasn't even true. But nevertheless, that's what they did. The president demanded this and Jeff Sessions complied and the rest of the Department of Justice complied as well. The, the inspector general delivered a truncated, rushed, uh, unfair report that left out material evidence. The FBI, knowing their process wouldn't conclude before I retired, rushed it, sped up the clock uh, to get done what the attorney general and the president were demanding. I mean, it's that's why this settlement, I mean, it's a great thing for my family, but I, I think it's a message to government employees, to civil servants everywhere. This is the current Department of Justice standing up for fairness and standing up for the rule of law. Um, in the settlement agreement itself, they agree uh, that members of the executive branch should not interfere in internal political, uh, internal personnel matters because it creates the appearance of political influence.
Well, that's exactly what happened here. Uh, the, the justification, as I mentioned at the time of your firing, was that a Department of Justice Inspector General's report said you had lied about a media leak to investigators. I know you've been on the record about this many times, but can you just briefly explain to people not familiar with the case what that was about? Yeah, sure. I was asked um, in, in two different interviews about what I knew about a release of information to, to a journalist uh, of a story in October of 2016. And in both cases, I, I misspoke um, uh, and then immediately after corrected the record, reached out to the folks that I, that I had spoken to and, and, and pointed them in the right direction, told them exactly what had happened. Um, never at any time did I intentionally mislead anyone about anything. And I think that's what today's result, finally, after all these years of saying this again and again and again, I think that's what this result uh, makes clear. In February of 2020, nearly two years after the investigation was opened into that allegation, prosecutors declined to bring any charges. That's 20 months to, to the day of this settlement. Did you expect it to take that long? Of course not. You know, the, the, the inspector general refers reports uh, to prosecutors all the time. They're typically turned around in days or weeks. Um, this went on for 20 months. Um, and I, and I, I personally believe uh, that it was necessary. It was necessary that it, for the Department of Justice to pursue this vindictive criminal prosecution to validate what they had done with my firing. Um, it was an effort to keep this story straight, to keep perpetuating this myth. It was incredibly damning. And just lastly, uh, on the day it was announced that no charges would be filed against you, which was a huge day, you said on CNN, you said, I don't think I'll ever be free of this president and his maniacal rage that he's directed at me and my wife. Do you feel free today? I mean, I feel better, but I don't feel free. I mean, I don't I, I don't kid myself to think that uh, the president is going to put aside his horrific judgment, his constant lying and his tormenting of me and my family. I'm sure this will just add another log to the fire. He'll probably be saying all kinds of things about it tomorrow. But you know what? I'm, I'm just to the point where I don't care. I don't care what that guy has to say. Yeah. Andrew McCabe, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Anderson. And thank you for your service.